In this chapter, we're going to introduce you to organic reactions and mechanisms. We'll start it off with a review from general chemistry of both the thermodynamics and kinetics of chemical reactions, but then we'll finish it off uh, dealing with organic mechanisms, which will be fairly new. Uh, we're going to start here with these reaction coordinate diagrams. Sometimes you'll see these called the reaction progress diagram, and this basically just follows a reaction as we go from reactants to products, just kind of an energy profile. So and in this case, you can see that we've always got a, an energy barrier to cross as we go from reactants to products. So, but independent of that barrier, just the difference in energy from reactants to products, that's delta H, your change in enthalpy. We often just kind of think of that as the heat of the reaction. So, and for an endothermic reaction, these absorb heat and have a positive delta H. So, whereas over here, an exothermic reaction, so these release heat, so produce heat, and have a negative delta H value. Uh, in this case, a couple of the terms you should know here. So we've got the transition state. The transition state is what you got at the top of the hill here. So at the top of that hill, it's not something you can isolate. Uh, you're on the way to becoming products, and at that point, you either got a choice. You go back to being reactants, or you go forward to being products, but the transition state itself is not isolatable. We'll find out later that it resembles both the reactants and the products uh, a little bit later. Let's move on. When talking about the enthalpy of a reaction, a useful tool we often address are what are known as bond enthalpies, or sometimes bond dissociation energies. And that last phrase, bond dissociation energies, uh, talks about what it is. And it's the energy it takes to break a bond. So in this case, it turns out it is endothermic. It costs energy to break a bond, but it is exothermic. It releases energy when you make a bond. And so the overall balance of making and breaking bonds then will, will let you kind of approximate delta H of a reaction. Now, one thing to note here. so bond breaking, when we talk about bond association energy here, is homolytic cleavage. Notice homo means the same, and in this case, both sides of the bond, both atoms in that bond get the same thing. They both get one electron. That's why we've got these half-headed arrows here, so showing that both carbon and hydrogen each get an electron, and that's why they both end up with an unpaired electron. So bond association energy refers to homolytic cleavage. So in this case, we can see to break the CH bond, it's 413 kilojoules per mole. So, and typically the stronger the bond, the higher the bond enthalpy or bond association energy. Uh, and typically bonds are going to be stronger uh, when they're between smaller atoms, so a shorter bond's a stronger bond, as well as when the atoms are more electronegative. So if they're similar in size, then electronegativity be the next thing you look at, and more electronegative atoms will make stronger bonds as well. Uh, the other thing we'll look at is that triple bonds are stronger than double bonds between the same two atoms, and double bonds are stronger than single bonds between the same two atoms. So we can kind of see that in comparing a carbon-carbon single bond at 348 kilojoules per mole, a carbon-carbon double bond at 614 kilojoules per mole, and there's your carbon-carbon triple bond at 839 kilojoules per mole. Notice it's not just, you know, from a single to a double, uh, a double in energy. So it turns out when you've got a sigma in a single bond, and then your double's a sigma and a pi, and your triple is going to be a sigma and two pi bonds. And it turns out generally, your sigma bond uh, takes more energy to break than a pi bond. And that's why your double bond, which is one sigma and one pi, is not quite twice as much energy uh, to break as compared to just a single sigma bond uh, between the two carbons. So one thing to keep in mind, we can't just take a, a single bond and double it to get you know the energy to break a double bond or triple it to get the energy to break a triple bond, because um, the pi bonds generally take less energy to break. There's some exception to that, but that's kind of the general trend. So I said a minute ago that bond enthalpies here could be used to approximate delta H of a reaction. Uh, in this case, the reason it's approximated, because uh, bond energies or bond association energies are typically given as averages. So it turns out the bond's going to have a little bit different energy from environment to environment, from molecule to molecule. So usually what we're giving you are averages, and so this is really going to be somewhat approximate. Uh, but essentially all you do is sum up all the bonds of the reactants and subtract out all the bonds of the products. We're summing up the reactants because that's where the bonds would be broken. We're subtracting the products because when we're forming the bonds in the products, it would actually be releasing energy. So the negative sign here kind of changes the sign to show it's a release of energy. Uh, but more simply, it's usually just easier to sum up the bonds that are simply broken minus the ones that are formed rather than all the bonds in the reactants and products. Uh, so if we look at this reaction below, you want to compare the reactants to the products and find any bonds on the reactant side that are not present on the product side. Those are the ones that are broken. And we see the first one here is the CH bond, and for that CH bond, it's going to need to absorb 413 kilojoules of energy to break it. The second is the bromine-bromine bond here, and we're going to need to absorb 193 kilojoules of energy to break that one. And then we can look at the product side, and we want to find any new bonds on the product side that were not present on the reactant side. 
And the first is this carbon bromine bond. And we see that that's going to release 276 kilojoules of energy. The second one here is this HBr bond. And we can see that's going to release 366 kilojoules of energy. So, and then simply we calculate the delta H the reactions. Bonds broken minus bonds formed here. So it's going to be a total of 413 plus 193 minus. So, and then the sum of the bonds formed, so 276 plus 366. And if we kind of add these together, 413 plus 193, it's almost about the same as 413 plus 200. It should be 613, but we've overestimated by 7, so that's going to be 606 kilojoules. So, and then we'll subtract off 276 and 366, that's 642. And so in this case, we can see that the delta H of the reaction equals 606 minus 642, which is going to be negative 36 kilojoules per mole. So overall, with a negative delta H here, this is going to be an exothermic reaction. It turns out, so we are releasing more energy than absorbed, than is, uh, by, in the bonds that are formed anyways, than uh, the energy that's absorbed by the bonds that are broken. So overall, a negative delta H.